the Group C era produced a number of memorable cars, from the Porsche 956 to the 3.5 litre Jaguar XJR14. And then there's the Lancia LC2, a brutally effective looking racer that remains etched in the minds of those who saw it in period. The famous Martini livery and the noise from the twin-turbo, Ferrari-based V8 must have played their part, because, in truth, the LC2 looked more effective than it actually was. Outright speed was never a problem. Piercarlo Ginzani put the car on pole position for its first race, the 1983 Monza 1000km, and led until a tyre burst. Throughout that debut season, reliability woes stopped the car reaching its potential, but it did at least score a strong second place at Kyle Army at the end of the year, splitting the formidable Rothmans Porsches. The frustrations would continue, however. In 1984, Bob Wallach put the car on pole position at Le Mans, but he and Alessandro Nanini dropped to eighth by Sunday afternoon. The following year, Riccardo Patrese qualified fastest in the first three races, but converted none of those into wins. After two races of the 1986 season, the factory team withdrew from the World Sports Car Championship. With a sudden change of rules being applied in rallying, already meagre resources were needed elsewhere. The record books don't do justice to the LC2. Three wins from 51 starts isn't the strike rate that the team had hoped for. But the appeal of the Lancia lies in its undoubted charisma more than its on-track results. The livery helps, of course, as does the list of those who raced it from Wallach, Nanini and Patrese to Michele Alboreto, Mauro Baldi and Teo Fabi. It undoubtedly looks the part too, the 1980s being perhaps the last era to produce genuinely attractive racing cars, devoid of the fussy details required by downforce. No wonder the LC2 is remembered so fondly and has now become such a popular sight in historic racing. <laughs>